when I was a kid, I used to look forward to every winter because it's time to go pike fishing. Now, traditionally, the pike season runs from the 1st of October to the end of March. We've got my old buddy, Dean Asplin here. He's a pike fishing expert, and hopefully we're gonna go over the basics so you can go out and have a go. Now, with pike fishing, I would strongly advise that you don't go for the first time on your own. You really need to go with someone. This is the perfect opportunity to get one of your angling mates to take you out and have a go to catch one of these beautiful creatures. Oh, I feel right, I don't wanna just forgive you, I just wanna be fine. I'll be waiting for a sign to light up, yeah. And your heart is out of sight. I just wanna feel mine. It's easy, this pike fishing, isn't it? I love it. You just want to make sure you're right. Right, so what dead baits are we using today, Dean? Okay, so for my float fishing, I prefer to use slightly smaller baits because you need to be able to cast them. So smelt, or in this case, dead roach. And you can see I've got a dead frozen roach there and keep them partially frozen so uh, I'd bring a cool box with me to keep them in uh, this keeps them fairly frozen and they will defrost throughout the day but the reason why it's good to have them slightly frozen is that they will cast better and stay better on the hook when you first put them out so let's put the rubbish in there and then what we'll do is I hook them slightly differently a lot of people will hook uh, dead baits one in the towel and then one down the flank of the fish but when I'm dead baiting from a float I prefer to turn the fish upside down and then put the first set of trebles through the top of the dorsal fin of the fish. This is because it's the strongest bit of the fish. There's a bit of a bone there, um, a strong tissue from the fins, which will hold the hook in properly. And then what I do with the second one is I just turn it around and anywhere down near the bottom of the fish is a bit brutal, but the fish is dead, I can assure you. And there you go. And then that's how I fish them. So when the, it then sits more like a lifelike fish in the water underneath the float, and then when a pike comes along, it will come along, grab it on sideways, and then it will try and spin it and take it down that way. And it's normally this top treble here that will go into the side of the pike's mouth. <laughs> one a nice one and it's taking our float dead bait first thing to do is i've taken it out of the nets because what i don't want is any of the treble hooks or the spare hooks to get caught up in the net if this pipe thrashes around now what i've done is you can see i've got a pair of waders on and i've got my legs either side of the pipe just to support it and i've turned it slightly on its back and then what i'm going to do you just gently put your hands Inside here, you want to be very careful of the gill plates. They're very delicate fish. And if you're feeling fresh around, just tighten your leg hold to stop him doing so and just take your time with him. And then if you just feel underneath, you'll feel a nice bit of fleshy skin there. That's safe to put your fingers and you can just lift his uh, mouth back. Okay, so you can see the hooks there and all the teeth are on top and around the side of the bottom. So you wanna be very careful where you put your fingers. And this is where I use multiple tools because one set of forceps just isn't enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unhook this one first, clamp it on, there you go. And what I'm gonna do is leave that one with the forceps still attached. And then I'm going to get another pair of forceps. And then gently grab hold of it. 
give it a little bit of a twist and there we go an unhooked bike nice and safely make sure you can leave those attached to the rig so they're safe and won't get tangled up and there we have our lovely bike Now, if you're fishing in fresh water, like we are today, you will need a fishing license from the Environment Agency. Now, if you're 12 or under, you don't need one. If you're between 13 and 16, you need to get yourself a junior license, but don't worry, they are free. There's a link in the description. If you're age 17 or over, you will need a full price license, unless you're an OAP or you have a disability. Buying a fishing license is really easy these days. You can do everything online. There's a link in the description. It's a very simple process. I renewed mine the other day. It takes a couple of minutes. That's it. Dean, what rod do we need for pike fishing? Okay, so what you're looking for is more the strength of the rod more than anything. So you're looking for a rod, I would say three pound test curve upwards, probably about three and a half test curve is uh, ideal. And the reason for that is because you want the power to be able to uh, cast quite heavy uh, dead baits out uh, to, to the areas that you need 20, 30, even 40 feet at times. So you need to be able to cast that far. The um, uh, size of rod, I would say anything from 10 foot up to 13 foot is ideal. Uh, 13 foot if you want to be able to cast a lot further, but I wouldn't say they were an ideal starting rod. Uh, so about 12 foot is, is about the norm. This is a Shakespeare Cipri reel. Uh, this is perfect, it's just a standard uh, budget cart reel. Uh, and it's loaded, you'll see there, with 17 pound mono. Uh, we recommend mono to start with, but you wanna go fairly heavy, certainly towards the 20 pound mark. Uh, anything less than that, uh, we don't want to be endangering the pike that we're fishing for and potentially uh, having snap off. So certainly 17 to 20 pound breaking strain. Um, and then maybe even moving up to braid a bit later on in your fishing experience and once you've handled a few pike on the bank it may just keep those hooks in a little bit better. Okay so first thing we do is we put the rod together nice and simple just slots on the end there have a good look down the rod like this and make sure that all the eyes are lined up correctly. There we go. So the next step is to open the bail arm to let some line off and then find the end of the line and then this is where you check to see what your eyesight's like you then push the line through each one of the eyes now before you go any further just check that you have not missed any eyes all the way down there that's running lovely out of there and we can just pull some line off because it's still on the open drag and then we can just flip the bail on back over to stop the line spilling off the reel so this is all we need to go pike float fishing so we have a float this one is a 30 gram float this means it will hold um, dead baits of 30 grams or less up in the water we have a uh, wire trace here with two sets of trebles on we have some quick change weights and then some float stops so not very much is needed at all so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a float stop up the line there we go, so what you do, you see these are on bits of wire with a loop in the end, you just put the line through the loop and then pull the float stop up the line. It's a little bit tight, sometimes if it's a bit tight like that, just wet it. Bit of saliva, not the greatest look on video, but there we go, you can put it on there and then it should slide up the line nice and easy. The next thing we put on is the float. So again, just find the hole in the end of the float. This is an inline float. And thread the line through the middle of the float. Grabbing the end, and then pulling it up to the float stop. And it, it does exactly as its name says, it stops the float going up the line. The next thing we do is we put on another float stop. And the great thing about these float stops is 
if the worst was to happen and your line was to break, then everything would come free. There we go. So we now, we've now trapped the float on the line and we'll, we'll go back to that bit in a minute. So the next thing that we'd put on is one of these quick change links. Now, quick change weights. Now, if I was fishing fast flowing water, I might go for the heavier one. But in this case, we're fishing a gravel pit uh, with not much flow on it. And so therefore I'm going to use the lightest I can get away with. That's quite important. We don't want to create any resistance to the pike feeling the dead bait at all. So I've got my quick change lead. All you do is you thread the tubing on first. And then put the lead onto the bit of plastic. And you'll find there's a groove that runs through and just twist the lead so it covers the groove and stops the line coming out and then just fire, slide the end of the silicon up the plastic insert and there we go it does move at the moment but what we do now is we put the rig on with a swivel and then the end of this goes over the swivel to trap it so what size hooks do we want okay so I would say anything between an eight and a six uh, for dead baiting. You're not using massive uh, dead baits. So uh, this is a size six. There was a bit of a challenge when you first get them out of the packets to so take your time because what you don't want to do is kink the uh, metal trace and create any weakness there. So just slowly work from one end, under, under. There we go. So you see we have here two treble hooks so now we're going to tie our end line to our trace swivel so for this we're going to use a grinner five turn grinner knot so we go through the swivel twice pull it down then with you've got a tag end and your main line so then create grab your tag line tag end and create a loop hold it with your thumb and forefinger then move the line under your main line and through the loop five times. One, two, three, four, five. And then gently pull. And before you go too tight, just moisten with a bit of saliva. And then pull down to the swivel. And there you go. It just the, the put a bit of moisture on there stops any kinks in the line or any uh, abrasiveness happening to the line. Okay, so we've tied our knot and cut our tag end. Now we look for the quick change weight and pull it down over the swivel of the wire. There you go. You've got your set of trebles on your wire trace that comes with your swivel already connected. And then you slide down your quick change weight. There you are, you have your two float stops either end of the float. And what you need to do to set the depth, you just slide the float stop up or down the line. All the little bits and bobs of tackle we're using in this video can all be purchased from our friends at Angling Direct. We've got a link in the description. Go and have a look. There's free delivery on anything over $9.99. And if you've got an Angling Direct store near you, it's well worth going in and having a chat with them because they actually have Angling Trust licensed qualified coaches in the stores to help you get fishing.
one's come unhooked, has it, Dean? He uh, span his head in the net and the trebles both came out, so he was very lightly hooked, but it saves me a job putting him on the mat and unhooking him. So we'll just quickly show you him. Or her, we don't know. <laughs> there we go. He's taking, oh, let's give him a cuddle before you release them. And there we are, you can see the absolutely beautiful autumn colours. There we go. What a lovely fish. And we'll just slip him back now. Give him a kiss. And away he goes. It's easy, this pike fishing, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> so, Dean, just as we've been sort of showing how to set up the float stuff, we've basically caught two fish in what? 20 minutes? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, float fishing can really give you a return uh, quite quickly on catching pike. So I've got here fairly early this morning, cast the float out and within 20 minutes it's gone. And um, I think that's key, in fact. The great thing about float fishing is you can be really mobile and I wouldn't stick to one swim for too long. So if, if you cast out and you haven't caught within 20 minutes, move on to the next swim and cast out there and leave it 20 minutes. And it's a great way of covering a lot of lake and a lot of river. Um, so that's the great thing about pike fishing. Um, when you get a bite, how long are you leaving it? Okay, so uh, the great thing about float fishing is you've got a indicator that tells you instantly the moment a pike picks up your bait. Now, I wouldn't leave it too long after that float goes underneath the surface because what we don't want to do is deep hook a pike. What we want to do is hook the pike uh, square and neatly in the scissors or the mouth uh, or the outside of the mouth of the pike. Therefore, don't leave it too long to strike. Therefore, the moment that float bobs and starts to go under, that's the time I would strike. Um, I'd rather miss the pike than um, catch and land a pike that's deep hooked because we do not want to struggle getting those hooks out. That is all we've got time for. We hope you've enjoyed this pike fishing video. Uh, we've caught some beautiful pike today. Um, the tactics that we've used, nice and easy, anyone can do it. But as we said at the start, we would strongly advise, if you've never been pike fishing before, to go with someone that knows what they're doing. Now, a lot of people like to hibernate in the winter, but we hope that we've shown you in this video you don't have to hibernate, you can come out. We've actually only been fishing for a few hours and we've caught all them beautiful pike. Uh, it was pretty much as easy as that. Um, I'm not saying you're gonna catch loads of double figure pike every time you go, but it can be as easy as what we've just shown you. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, maybe you should consider doing so.